<laughs> What's up, man? What's the deal? Get some man? gas? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. Got to fill her up with my $15 that you're hating on me. Nice. Man, you're in an infinity, man. You can't be doing that shit. <laughs> it's all right, though. All right, so we're sitting here with uh, my man Frank White. I'm going to drive around with him a little bit today. Yeah. Find out a little bit more about him. Yeah. Sitting here. All you viewers on there are currently watching J. Miller Vision. Right. Soon to be YouTube sensation Frank White right here Mixtape, look for it Bam, yeah. just, just just brought a mixtape out right here Frank White, leader of the new era Another Jay Miller creation right there for you guys We'll check that out later though Ask him a little bit more about that So Frank White, where you from man? Uh, I'm from, uh, originally from here In uh, Columbus, Ohio but I'm from, you know, I was raised in Texas and California, really, you know what I'm saying, if you want to be technical about it, most of my life, and uh, lived in several different parts of Texas, Austin, Houston, you know what I'm saying. Can you explain what that means, Frank White, how you got the name? Mm. How I got the name was <laughs> on the, uh, the movie uh, King of New York, and Christopher Walken, uh, Frank White, uh, so... He's white. You know, everybody thinks Frank White's black, but he's white with the black crew. That's why Biggie used to always say that the black Frank White. So, okay. So I'm see. the king right now. Hold it down. Yeah. When I was 17, uh, for stealing guns and shit like that. And um, there was a Muslim in there. Uh, Name, well, his last name was Brown, but his uh, Muslim name was like Tali, and uh, he wanted to own this uh, <laughs> record company when he came home called Racist Records, <laughs> and he like had me look up in the dictionary what racist mean and all this stuff, like he just wanted to start some fucking controversy like a motherfucker, and uh, he always like, I want you to start rapping, I want you to start rapping, and uh... He kind of like like inspired me to start rapping, like, cause he like he was like, cause a lot of people have always told me, you know, when I come in the room, a lot of people, they're like, you got that glow. People want to know who you are. People want to know who you are. And that's what he always told me, because when I was in, you know, locked up, man, like white dudes, you know, prison is all about race and shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, when I went there, you know, I was, you know, I I grew up around nothing but black cats. You know, so, but naturally, you know, I that I was cool. There were black dudes in jail, but you know, and when I, you know, the old schools were like, when you go to the joint, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't be like that. You got to be cool with your people. So, you know, I took that advice, and when I went, you know, went to prison, you know, I tried to be cool with my people in the beginning, but they were like trying to like fucking put all this prejudice shit in my head and shit. So, I wasn't down with that shit, you know. And, uh, I ain't gonna be down with that shit because fucking, you know, you want me to be down with something, so fuck that shit. So I fucking, you know, changed the order of things and fucking was just kicking it with black cats, you know what I'm saying? Was solo for a minute and a lot of black cats respected that shit, man, and like, you know, backed me up and shit because I was holding my own and checking my own paper and stuff like that and they respected me, man, and, uh, you know protecting me at times, you know, when I could, you know, I wound up, you know, going through some shit in there, I wound up, you know, getting stuck and shit like that, but, you know, Ty Lee, you know what I'm saying, he, like, took, like, a personal interest to me, and, uh, was up under me like that, and he just gave me the interest to start rapping, and that's what it was, I started rapping in there, but it was all gangster rap, you know, it wasn't, like, nothing what I'm doing now, it was just, like, straight killer rap. Kill, 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 kill. <laughs> rob, rob, rob. <laughs> so, that's where the interest came from, man, was him. You know, just somebody that I respected and he respected me just gave me the interest to find something that I could be great at because I didn't want to be a criminal anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being 17, you know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers trying to give me a life sentence, man. I wound up getting 40 fucking years behind, you know, the shit that I did. And I was like... Fuck that shit, nigga. Like, I ain't even trying to fucking, you know, I ain't trying to live my life like that no more. So when I came home, you know, I wanted to, you know, be great at something, be remembered for something. 
but I damn sure didn't want to be sitting behind the penitentiary walls for life for it, you know, if I had my way, so music was the path to greatness, and that is my main motivation for why I do music, period, is to be remembered by the world. The maniac movement, dog. That's what we getting on right now. The maniac movement. That's right. People need to catch on to that. Yeah, and the maniac movement, it ain't nothing negative. You know what I'm saying? But it can be used in a negative fashion, I guess. But the maniac movement, man, is just for anybody at any age who listens to music, you know. If you're just getting off a hard day at school, you know, and you want to come home and your parents ain't home and you got chores you got to do and you want to turn on that favorite song of yours or that favorite CD and you just want to jam out and go crazy and nobody's paying attention, that's going maniac. You know what I'm saying? If you're with your friends at a party and you're just, you know, having a good time, whatever the case may be, enjoying yourself, how you do in your own personal zone, when you lose yourself in that zone, that's going maniac. And that's what that's about. So when my crowd's out there and they're just losing their self in the zone off of my music, then they're going maniac. Um, now tell us a little bit about this uh, this CD we just had come out. It's uh, Leader of the New Era, right? Yeah. Yeah. How uh, how was that? How, how, explain to me a little bit of the process that you had in writing that and, and, and getting that from start to finish. How, how did that go? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, just writing, 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 writing and putting songs together. Uh never really had a set time to finish it kind of i mean we kind of did but we kind of didn't and uh my throat setbacks. yeah yeah a lot of setbacks man I, I damaged my throat uh at the twister concert twister had a concert here and uh i opened one of the acts that opened up for him and uh the sound system was bad and i was yelling like a mofo and i was sick and might have damaged him uh my uh freaking things right here whatever they're called oh, yeah not my vocal oh. but the lip nodes or whatever yeah, they are right it. here um i just recently got off medication for it man i oh shit and taking forever so that shit was giving me setbacks you know and um i was really just trying to find myself in the music because since i had left music alone for so long like uh when i was rapping before I had, was never really myself in the music, I should say. I mean, I was myself, but it was different. It was different music back then than it is now. So now, you know, it was just kind of like steady. I, I, the mixtape was going to get done when I felt like there was more comfortable songs of me and my own skin. Like, I was doing songs, but they some songs weren't coming out like how I thought they should in my head or whatever. And those songs didn't make the cut. You know, and the songs that came out, whether... They were from a, a hard kind of, you know, hit you in your face song to a female song to a pop track. Because I have all levels of songs on there. They're all me. But if those songs didn't come, like, seem like they touched me and my entity as the song was supposed to come out, then it didn't make the track. And there's 19 tracks on them, and all of them I vouch for. There ain't one track on there that sucks. Uh, yeah. Period. I don't let shit go by, you know. I, you know, you can ask the manager in the back right now. I'm, the, I'm the hardest critic on my own shit. You know, yes, I, don't, I don't fuck around. I second that. I mean, I'll be writing shit and then turn around and erase it. He'll come out. He's like, you ain't done yet. I'll be like, man, I erased it. You know, I ain't, I ain't writing four different verses, whatever, to one track, and be like, man, fuck, go back and redo it. I'm like, damn, man, quit being so hard on yourself. You're probably already making a hit. And don't even know it, but you let it go. And he'll redo it again. But it always comes out hot regardless how he does it. So, I ain't trying to make no music. I mean, nothing you can say right now, nothing you can say in life is repeat. I mean, it's you can't say nothing new. You know, I just come at it from a, a different perspective as any man does. But to me, I feel like a lot of these rappers out here are just like ABC rappers, man. Just putting words together. It ain't really like no... It's not crafty anymore. They're not really... You know, it's like... A, it's like, I feel like I'm like one of the last of the dying breed of artists now on a, who's trying to be on a mainstream level because any artists I feel like that are really talking about something, I feel like they're staying underground. Where I have created my craft to where I can still talk about what I want to talk about but on a commercial level because I stepped all the way outside of the box of myself 
just spit music and then it just came first full circle. Like it's crazy. I can't even just took it. On there, but yeah. where he is now. And now it is, man. It took damn near a whole year to do that shit. And now, you know, I can spit commercial music but with you know how I want to say it, man, and I feel like I'm a threat, like a motherfucker. You know that I'm the type of guy that loves to play with words. I got the world spinning my hand, baby girl, and it's never stopping. I pop and lock it, close my hand, and I put it right in my pocket. I know I never stopped it.